Since April 2017, the Xi Jinping leadership, under the guise of fighting terrorism, secession, and religious extremism, has greatly intensified the Chinese Communist Party's long-standing repressive policies against mainstream nonviolent Muslim cultural and religious practices in Xinjiang. The stated goal of the current campaign is to sinicize religion and adapt religion to a socialist society, suggesting that Beijing believes it now possesses the political, diplomatic, and technological capabilities to transform religion and ethnicity in Chinese society in a way that its predecessors never could, even during the peak horrors of the Cultural Revolution and other heinous Maoist campaigns intended to remake Chinese society. Some, the scope of this campaign is truly breathtaking. Authorities now prohibit abnormal beards, the wearing of veils in public, and classify refusal to watch state television as a crime, refusal to wear shorts, abstention from alcohol and tobacco, refusal to eat pork, fasting during the holy month of Ramadan, practice, and practicing religional, traditional funeral rituals as potential signs that individuals harbor extreme religious views. Chinese authorities have banned parents from giving their children a number of traditional Islamic names, including Muhammad, Islam, Fatima, and Aisha, and have reportedly required children under age 16 who have Islamic names to change them. Of particular concern since 2015, Chinese authorities have increasingly criminalized or punished the teaching of Islam to young people, even by their parents adopting at least six new laws or regulations to put parents and religious leaders at legal risk if they promote nonviolent Muslim scripture, rituals, and clothing to children. Chinese authorities also continue to crack down in particular on the use of Uyghur and other minority languages at universities and in classroom instructions. As you noted, the, we now believe based on a wide array of evidence that the number of individuals detained in re-education centers for violating these strictures since April 2017 numbers in at least the hundreds of thousands, possibly millions. There are even disturbing reports that young children have been sent to state-run orphanages if only one of their parents is detained in internment camps. We call on China to end these counterproductive policies and free all those arbitrarily detained. As you noted, with many things related to China's human rights abuses, the repression does not stop at the Chinese border. The detention and persecution of Uyghur and other Muslim minorities in Xinjiang has compelled them to stop communicating with their family and friends abroad. We also are concerned by reports of Chinese authorities harassing Uyghurs abroad to, and to compel them to act as informants, return to Xinjiang, or remain silent about the situation. Chinese authorities appear to be targeting law-abiding Uyghurs, including nonviolent activists and advocates for human rights at home and abroad, as terrorist threats based solely on the basis of their political, cultural, and religious beliefs and practices. We have, this is an example, you've just described here, what we're gonna hear today is stuff from like a horrible movie. I mean, just these are crazy things. Things that we've read about that used to happen thousands of years ago or things that happened under these regimes in a science fiction novel. I mean, talking about forcing people to eat certain foods that violate their dietary laws of their religion, controlling what people name their children, trying to strip their identity from them, uh, both religious and ethnic. The list goes on. I mean, these are some of the most horrifying things that are happening in the world today. That it doesn't lead newscasts in the country and around the world in and of itself is problematic. But this is outrageous. And it's hypocritical. And the international organizations that stand by and say nothing. Why? Because China went into somebody's country and built a road or a bridge or maybe bribed them and gave them a billion dollars to be quiet and, and go along. This is just, this is sick. And I just don't understand why there isn't more coverage of this and why there isn't more understanding of who we're dealing with here and what they're up to and what they do. And the next time someone comes to me and says, well, you don't understand China, they're peaceful rise, this, that, and the other, I have no, I have no problem. I have tremendous admiration for the ancient uh, uh, culture and history of China and of its people. And I want China to be a key player in the world. We would love to have some help in dealing with all the challenges on this planet. It would be great to have another superpower to partner with. But this is what these people do with the power they have now. Imagine what they will do when that power grows militarily, economically, and geopolitically. 
Because if this is how you treat your own people, how do you expect them to treat people in some other part of the world? And I hope people wake up and understand what we're confronting here in the grave crisis that it presents.